Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Plexta M6E. Now this is a PCI Express solid state drive, but it's also uh, an M.2 drive. So you've essentially got a, a PCI Express add-in card with an M.2 drive on the top of it. The PCI Express uh, is designed to go on um, uh, PCI Express 2 bandwidth, which is what the uh, M.2 is as well. Now, a lot of motherboards have the M.2 port on now for the Z97 range onwards. So what we are going to do is test both. We'll test the add-in card itself and then the uh, onboard on a uh, Maximus Ranger as well. Now, when we have a look at the... Uh, the add-in card itself, you've got a few LEDs around the back, it basically is just about power and stuff. It's a single silver uh, back plate with Plexto obviously written on the back. And then a very basic green PCB add-in card. It kind of, to me, this just screams like a server part or something, because the PCI Express, or sorry, the PCI plate on the back is not black, whereas most of our mother, you know, our case will be. The PCB is green, which obviously isn't going to look particularly great because there's not even a lot of chips or anything on it anywhere. It's very basic and it's just, as you can see, just a gloss green. Now for a performance rig, this is going to stand out like a sore thumb and I'm not sure Plexter have kind of completely thought that through, um, especially for the enthusiast end of the market. And obviously that's what I am, that's what I represent, that's what I'm assuming you guys are. So it seems a bit of a shame that it has, you know, come in green. But anyway, we'll test the, uh, um, what we're going to do in the video is just test the M.2 on the, uh, the board itself. But for the, the reviewers as a whole and what you'll see in the graph is we've done PCI Express ones and M.2 ones. Now the kit itself, this as a whole, comes in around the kind of 190, 200 pound mark for 256. But just the drive itself can be found for around the 160 pound mark. And just the drive itself again for a 128 you can find in the UK for about £90. Um, so yeah, let's move on and take a look at this in the rig. Here we are then peeps, we've got it fitted to the Ranger and this is our test system. Essentially it's a Maximus 7 uh, Ranger Z97 board. We've got a 4790K in there at stock but in this board it just runs it at a native 4.4 gigahertz. And then we've got 2400 megahertz of Corsair uh, Vengeance Pro running at rated. And if we zoom in, you can see the uh, M.2 mounted to the uh, motherboard there. Obviously, you can see the little void kind of sticker. It's catching the light quite well from this angle, in fact. But that's it all fitted, all nice and basic. And uh, just so that you know, people keep have commented recently about why I run the benchmarks in the video. Well, I do keep um, screenshots anyway, but if I, you've seen a bench be run on the screen, then you can't question the results. Um, it's just a way of me being able to um, hit the trolls off at the pass, so to speak. But obviously, I'll still show you the, uh, the, the graphs and everything as well. Okay then, peeps. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with Anvil, and all I need to do is select the M.2 drive from the top, and we're going to hit Run. Just to make it clear, we are running this in the board itself, although I will show you graphs that show you the board and the PCI Express um, directly. But I'm going to hit this now and head off. Hope you then, peeps. So I'm just going to show you the uh, graph quickly. But we've obviously already seen the screenshot with it on the, um, the desktop and everything as well. But... On the run that we did in the video, we got 729.34 megabytes a second on the sequential read, and then 547 um, megabytes a second on the sequential write. And the overall Anvil score was 4,288. Obviously, you've got the, um, uh, the um, results that we used in the review as well, because you know things can change, drivers, all, not necessarily drivers, sorry, but like, um, you, you trim and all that kind of stuff. So we've got a live result and then we've also got the graph result. But 729 meg uh, read and a 550 basically right. How could you not be happy with that considering the size of this thing? <laughs> anyway, back to the uh, desktop. What we're going to do 
is uh, literally just open, select the drive. We've got T already selected, there we go, T. And we're gonna start doing crystal disc mark now. Okay, so now we have our CDM or our crystal disc mark result. 737.7 megabytes a second read and then 581.4 on the right. They're obviously the sequential read and writes which are the, generally the, the bigger result. But uh, I'm not joking, over 700 meg and almost 600, over 700 read which is obviously the important one for general system stuff and then almost 600 meg write. It's just fucking batshit crazy. I mean, that is a just an unreal performance for a system drive. And let's face it, that's not in RAID, you're not gonna have any problems with drivers or anything like that. It's just going to be out of the box silly fast. Okay then, peeps. So moving on to a conclusion. Now, uh, the, the award is kind of like twofold really because it's a uh, the, the it's a bit of a confused one we've obviously got the m6e with the pci express adapter um but you can buy the actual drive itself individually now the 256 is going to cost you about 165 pounds and the uh, 128 is going to cost you around and about the kind of 90 pound mark so for those kind of prices they are, um, they are you know, slightly more expensive than some of the other ones. But what you need to remember is the speed difference. You can get budget drives that are much cheaper, but you're obviously gonna get nowhere near the performance that you will with these. So you, you obviously, as with everything, whether it's a solid state drive or an M.2, you're gonna be paying for the, the, the faster memory. Now, with, once you add this, you end up, this ends up costing you about 40 or 45 pound extra to get this. Now, the way we thought with it is if you're just going to chuck it in your rig, then lovely. But it's obviously a performance product. And as with graphics cards, we would very much like to have seen the PCB on this be black. Now, obviously, Plex there are going to be not necessarily in tune as far as stuff like this is concerned with the high end enthusiast market. But chucking something green like this in your system, especially if you've got a window or something, is going to end up just almost dating your PC. Um, so considering how much this cost and how basic this is, because it pretty is just a lump of silicon with an M.2 port on it, um, I don't think it would have been too much to have asked to have had that have been black. So in that respect, this side of it, I don't particularly like at all. Um, if you were putting it in a server or something, windows hidden away, that type of thing, brilliant. But as soon as you're talking about, oh, actually, I may be adding this into a nice high performance system. I don't want to upgrade to Z97, so I've not got a, um, an M.2 on, your, on your, your board itself. You may have a 2011 rig or something, and you want to get access to these fast read and writes. That really kind of, that just lets it down. For the sake that they could have just smashed some black on it, um, I would, yeah, I, I, that is a big letdown to me. But the actual drive itself, if you went for this as a drive on its own, like I said, 165, around the 90 pound mark for the cheaper 128, I probably would say get the, the 256. Because with these kind of speeds, you, you could be looking at uh, an immensely fast rig. Um, again though, the PCB that it's on, although you can't see a lot of it, is green and it would be great if they could have brought out a black one because the aesthetics do matter to us nowadays so what we've gone with is a uh, oc 3d performance award because the um the the, the 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 performance is there it's a great performing product it's going to outperform any of the normal 2.5 inch um, ssds that you can get but with the green as far as that is concerned it, it, it's just a little bit dated um, I know that with these that they've been used to like just chucking them in laptops and stuff like that but a black PCB for an, enth an enthusiast product it, it is paramount really. If it had a black PCB it would have got a gold award, let's put it that way. If this had been black it would have got a gold award as well. So it's technically what I've done is kind of, the perf I've marked it down to a performance because it does still perform really well but it doesn't deserve that gold because it's kind of the aesthetics just aren't there it's not quite pleasing enough the price is pretty good the performance is fucking brilliant 
but the green it, it's just not tickling my fancy um, it would be one of those ones where I'd kind of I'd want to kind of hide it away or maybe even make like a uh, um, a, a plexi cover to just go over that so you, you couldn't see it and that's a shame because you'd want to show off this so that people know you've got that blatant performance there. Um, so I hope Plexta um, come back with a black one because I actually know other manu oh, get it in your hand, I know other manufacturers will have them along very shortly and it would be sad that Plexta lose out on um, possible customers and everything just because the other manufacturers happen to bring out those black ones. But anyway, for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the review on the Plexter M6E M.2 solid state drive, out.